This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Okay, we're back, we're live. It's a 12 o'clock block here on Think Tech. We're talking about community matters. That's our show. And we're talking about qualifying for the Hawaii homeowners exemption for real property tax with Sarah Fairchild, concerned citizen. Actually, a citizen who's been hurt in the process. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sarah. Good morning. <laughs> so why don't you tell us your story? Okay, well, um, a few, I've owned my home since 2010. And at the time we bought the home, uh, I had just had a baby and my husband was very busy with his job. And we had been through an exhaustive buying process where escrow lasted eight months. We were, there were some issues with the sale. It was just stressful. And then uh, we finally got in the home and it, it was very dilapidated and there was a lot of work to be done. And thankfully at the time I had a realtor who was really on it. And in amidst all the other paperwork, she had us fill out this uh, homeowner's exemption. Yeah, one form. of the 50 forms you yes. had to complete. And this is not a form that a realtor is required to have you filled out, but she happened, she was good at her job and mm -hmm. made it happen. Okay. Um, this doesn't happen for everyone in their home sale. Mm -hmm. um, so it was something I, to be honest, I kind of just forgot about as mm -hmm. a lay person. No surprise. I think a lot of people forget about it. Yeah. And um, we, our, our taxes were paid through our mortgage and everything seemed normal for a few years. And then about four years later, uh, we moved out of state and I didn't think that I had to fill anything out. And uh, what I found out later was the tax office um, mailed us something and it was returned to them because we had a forwarding address now in another state. Um, at some point I may have gotten another form saying it's, it's the regular form that every homeowner gets um, saying the amount your property is appraised for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by the tax office. Mm -hmm. but. This um, one little line had changed, and it had gone from residential to residential A. I didn't see that. Who would know? Didn't know I mean, what it who meant. would know? Would anybody <laughs> know this? It's and not residential a, big a is not so good. It means you're not living in the house. Is that what? Right. They that, figured it out from the mail forwarding. Yes. Yes. And it was true, um, but I didn't realize there was any change really, and, and or at the implications of it. Um, and then the following year, after being gone for about 18 months, we moved back to Hawaii and back into the house. And a couple months later, we got a huge bill from our mortgage company saying our escrow account that pays your taxes was severely under, underfunded and that $600 a month was being added to our mortgage to catch up. Oh. And $600 yeah, that was, a month is a lot of bread. Big chunk. Yeah. <laughs> um, and at the time, I had three kids by this point, and um, my little one, we had to take out of preschool to it pay for that. Couldn't afford it because of the $600 extra yeah, charge. It was hard on us, but at least I had something I could, could work with and take out of the budget. And I, but I imagine for a lot of people, Easy. that would be. You wouldn't be eating. Yes, exactly. Um, so at this point, I had to do some sleuthing to figure out what had happened and found out that we were still residential A. And by residential A, we were still considered by the city and county to not be living in the house. So I thought, well, there's got to be a way that I can prove to them that we've now been living in this house and we should be paying the regular tax of any homeowner who's in the residence. And I went and I made some calls to the city and county. Um, I went online and, and filed my home exemption, which now you just go on their website and you check some boxes and electronically sign. It takes a minute or two. This is an application for home exemption. Yes. Okay. The problem is if you do not file for this home exemption by September 30th, you do not get it, even if you actually live in the house. So yes, there was one year we should have had to pay, but the other year we lived in the house the majority of the year and shouldn't have been paying these extra taxes, which in our case, 
equaled almost twice what our normal property tax was. Um, so I, I filed an appeal. Two years at, what, $600 a month for the extra charge? Yes, basically. Uh, well, me, we had to, we had to refund the account. right there. Well, what ended up happening was we had to back pay the escrow for the money that we had missed paying, and then we had to future fund it for this okay. higher tax rate. All right. Hopefully someday we're going to get some of that money back. It hasn't happened yet. So what happened was we, um, I went and filed. Um, it was a $25 fee to file an appeal. And then you wait some time, and then you go to the city and county, and they have a board, which is comprised of tax professionals and real estate professionals who hear your appeal. But not ordinary people. No, not really. They're, they're people that work in the tax or real they're estate in industry. in the industry. Yes. And there are 10 cases heard, I understand, every week. There were 10 cases when I was there. And you, are, you have a public hearing, although the results are only disclosed privately. And I, was, I heard a lot of repetitive stories, to be honest, when I was in there. I think every single person felt like they shouldn't have had to pay for it. Um, there was one person that day who ran a business um, who the business technically owned his home. He was told he was probably not going to be getting the money See, back. If, yeah, if a corporation owns your home, you're not entitled to the homeowner Un exemption. Understandable. Yeah. But the other nine seemed to have pretty, I, most of them actually did live in the house. Um, there, were, there were several people that had just bought, bought in, um, for the first time and didn't know they had to fill out the form. And, and the real, as you said, the realtor is not under an obligation to say anything to them. Exactly. It's their problem. Exactly. Okay. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it's a hard story to hear. I remember one guy was a first time homeowner, born and raised here, and he was telling them, you know, I worked so hard to buy my first house. Sure. I'm in my 30s. I'm so proud of myself. First and house then is just... always the hardest one because you have to scrape together all the money necessary, and most yeah. people don't have that kind of money. Right, and it's usually already a stretch because yeah. you stretch as far as you can, and, and then he's, he said, I, I've clearly lived in the house the whole time. I, I mean, I have all these proofs to show you I've been there. It seems unfair that you're just charging me this money. Um, and there, were, and there were a couple stories somewhat similar to that. And then another one was an elderly woman who, she actually wasn't there. She had a, a family member there for her because she was um, down to her bed, basically. And she had had a stroke and had moved into another family member's home for a few months and somehow in the course of that had lost her home exemption. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't that she was renting out the house or using it as an investment property or anything sick. like that. She was just sick and didn't but, understand the tax implications. Yeah, yeah. So it just, it, it seemed really well, unfair. Well, it, but it, it seems like, although you, you said that the, the results were not disclosed to the public, every one of these stories, the, there was a denial, it just sounds like. Yeah. Yes, well, I, I asked, I had asked one of the clerks that day, and I had previ previously asked on the phone, and they, both people had told me almost every single appeal is denied. One, one person said that in a couple of years working in there, she had only seen two appeals actually granted. Some were granted then. That's yeah, but out of thousands. <laughs> okay, but you know, it's not entirely mechanical, which means that the Board of Review who considers these appeals does have the ability to hear the facts and determine there is good cause to, to yes. give relief to the taxpayer. Yeah, and certainly they're, they're listening to every individual circumstance and really looking for the reasoning. However, this September 30th deadline is so absolute. And I compare it to the idea, if you file your federal taxes a day late or even six months late, you're charged a penalty, fines, interest, but you're not expecting to pay at a whole different that's a, rate. That's a good point, Sarah. Yeah. And I think, I think there needs to be a change from the city council um, a change to the ordinance that says 
that if you are late, that you can still file, and if you can show proof that you live there, that you'd still get the exemption and the lower tax rates, but that you will pay fines, tax interest, um, but not but not double your tax. Well, in my case, double my actual taxes. My recollection is that um, that the that the tax bills, there are two of them, each one for half the year, come starting in January, I think, which means that from September to January is like four months. I don't think they can effectively argue they need four months in order to adjust their records one mm -hmm. way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and as you say, um, they could easily uh, apply a fine and, and part of this has to be sort of a data processing issue. Uh, yes. Everyone knows the state is way behind on data processing. Although uh, Neil Abercrombie talked about, you know, a new world of data processing for Hawaii, it hasn't happened. And they're using machines that are very yeah. old. Well, I think that that applies to two parts of this process that could also be changed. Firstly, instead of just getting a normal print out like I received of your um, estimate of value of your house from the city and county with that little one line that says residential or residential A. I think if you are a new homeowner or someone who owns a home that has recently changed to residential A, you should get maybe an email. A letter would be okay, but an email would be cheaper and faster. Um, saying you're at risk yeah, for paying aboard. higher taxes. We're happy that you were able to scrape the money together to buy a house mm -hmm. in our state. Uh, and we want to tell you a little about the real property homeowners uh, tax, uh, homeowners exemption. That would be nice. Right, and in layperson say, wording, easy. not yeah. in tax wording, because you tell someone who's not in taxes. Nobody knows what that means. Hey, you're a residential A. Just wanted you to be aware that that means nothing to most people. They're not going to realize yeah. The, the difference they're going to be paying the next year. Yeah. Um, that's one, one piece. The other piece is to be more efficient. Instead of having to wait for this board and, and the process of how long it takes to get them together, how about we, we grant a little bit more power to the clerks that work in the office? Um, they're smart people. And they could at least take the verification of residents and examine the documents, just like a person that works at the driver's license office for the city and county is able to examine your residence. If we empowered them to be able to do it, then we don't have to wait for this board and, and pay for it. And, and I think that would make the process faster. Mm. Well, you know what strikes me? Um, there's a certain absolutism here. Uh, it reminds me back in the old days when the development, when they developed the gross excise tax, the general mm -hmm, excise mm -hmm. tax, the idea was to make it absolute, make it cover everything, as opposed to other states where it doesn't cover drugs, for example. Right. Uh, the rate may be higher, but the things it applies to are you know, fewer. And we have a rate that's actually gotten higher because of the rail issue. Um, but it covers everything at every level, right. essentially. And that's one of the reasons it's so expensive to live here, because you pay it for when the good comes in, and then when the middle man buys it, and, and then again when you buy it. Yeah. it. It's a lower rate for wholesale, I think, but but still, it, it applies to everything, and and it's that makes it higher than other states, which actually have a, a nominal rate that's higher. And the idea was at the outset, let's let's be absolute about this. And you know, there's a there's a funny there's a funny thing about aloha. You know, do we have to be so tough about it? Do we have to be so tough knowing that you're going to suffer and other people in similar circumstance? And I just thought I'd mention that because I think it's it's relevant. We we could we could build that into our tax policy. We don't have to be that hard. We could find a way to, you know give people a break once in a while. Yeah, and I think, I mean, these are really our citizens that are being affected by this. This is a tax for people that generally are living in their home, and it's usually their only home, and they've worked hard to it's own where it. where all their assets are in this yeah, home. Yeah, it's not a business that's owning it. It's not someone with a, a vacation home here. 
I think that's why the law was created to tax people that are, are, are buying investment properties to rent out or that are buying a vacation home that's their second or third home and it's sitting empty most of the year. Yeah. And that seems fair to me. But for people that are working so hard to have a home here, it seems like an unfair penalty to miss a deadline and then, sorry, you're paying higher taxes. Too bad. Yeah, let's take a short break, Sarah, Sarah uh, uh, Fairchild and um, a concerned citizen who's had this experience, and we'll come back and talk about some of the implications when you consider that it affects not only you and the people you saw in the appeals process there in the Board of Review, but uh, a lot of other people as well. Let's talk about the implications of that in terms of home, home, ownership, home ownership here in Hawaii. Be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel on ThinkTech. This is Community Matters. And we're talking about qualifying for the uh, Hawaii tax, uh, Hawaii real property tax homeowners exemption. It isn't as easy as you thought. It can be uh, kind of tricky. And Sarah Fairchild has been through this and lost some money in the process. So we wanted to explore with that. Are you out of the woods yet, Sarah? You know, I'm still in the appeals process, technically. I've, I've gone to the second level of appeal, which is with um, a tax court. But I, tax I court, filed yeah. it, I don't know, two months ago. Really haven't heard anything back yet. And I'm not too optimistic, to be honest. But I, I made sure I filed it for this year. And um, I've been telling everyone I can. Make sure you have it done by September 30th. It's good advice. It's a favor. You know, where else is it going to come from? But, I, you know, I wanted to, well, I hope, I wish you luck in that, and I hope you can make Thank a you. good case for them and show them that the equities should, should prevail here and that the tax revenues at issue are not really that great. Although there is a drive in government to collect every bloody penny because we need the money for rail and all that. Right. Know. But, I mean, that's the, the funny part to me is, or it's not it's not funny at all actually but they're getting all this money from a lot of citizens who own their homes it's their only home they can prove that they live there but it's not enough because they didn't file by September 30th but yet i know there are other people in my neighborhood that don't live in the home that are claiming the residential a whether they're renting it out to Regular yeah, let's, renters let's or that. using let's, it as so suppose suppose you are not living there mm -hmm. and you're renting it. There's an article in the morning paper about an Airbnb and how do you get them to actually um, you know pay pay a tax on their receipts um, for Airbnb and um, that's that's gross excise. That's mm -hmm. not necessarily real property, but it, real property goes hand in glove because. That it's a rental property, you don't qualify for the homeowner's uh, exemption. But, you know, I guess my, my question is, uh, is suppose I, um, I violate the terms of the homeowner exemption and it's, uh, I'm not living there, period. I'm not living there. I moved away. And people do that, I know. Yeah. Um, how is the tax, the tax office found you because the mail, your mail was forwarded to your address on the mainland. Yeah. Um, but if that hadn't happened, they would not have known. And in the case of uh, people who moved away, you know, move in with their family somewhere else, or whatever it is, um, how uh, they can get away with it, eh? 
If, if yeah. the tax office does not know, the tax office continues to give them the homeowner exemption. In other words, there's really no need for them to confirm, verify, repeat the affirmation year to year, anything like that. There's no, there's no mechanism for the tax, aside from this mail forwarding issue, uh, there's no way for the tax office to actually check up on a given exemption um, uh, beneficiary. Um, so where have you seen this and how do you become aware of it? Well, actually the day that I went to my appeal out of the other nine people, I actually recognized someone I knew and she's someone who coincidentally has become a realtor. And so, you know, these aren't all people that are totally naive to what's going on. And she had bought the house, not, not knowing, they bought it right around the deadline. I can't recall the exact date, but they didn't realize that they would ine immediately need to file this form. Um, but she told me, you know, we, know, we looked up, um, the tax records are available online. She said they looked up the people in their neighborhood and they found someone that was getting the homeowner's exemption, one of their neighbors, and they knew that the people were renting the house. I don't know how they were doing it, but it seems to me one way would be just to tell your renters that I'm going to receive some mail here and continue just holding it for me. Yeah. But that puts the onus yeah. really I, I on, suppose, on the, um, the homeowner. You can could, you could enforce this by having people tattle on each other, but that, people don't do that. Yeah, people don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's I really no way. I don't want to do can, that to my neighbors, certainly. No way they can verify one way or the other. And so um, uh, what you have is uh, people in your circumstance, which sounds to me legitimate, getting dinged for the, the extra tax, which is substantial. Um, and then people who are actually not living there and who may be aware of this, but they're kind of escaping the extra tax by not saying anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't sound fair, actually. What, what I think uh, I'd like to talk with you about is the, is the state policy about this whole thing. I mean, we have a state where, uh, and we had a discussion last hour about condos in Kaka'ako that go for m many millions of mm -hmm. dollars. There's one sold for $95 million recently. Um, and these are not owned by local residents. You're not in the market for a $95 million condo, are no, you, Sarah? unfortunately not. Yeah, nobody not I yet. know, actually. <laughs> But there are people who come into the state and buy that, and they, and they don't think for two seconds about homeowner exemption. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe they do. I wonder if they, I wonder if they do. I mean, they have a lawyer and he explains there, Yeah, maybe their lawyer does for them. You know, why don't you file for the homeowner exemption? And whether they're living there or not, that's hard to show one way or the other, as long as nobody else is living there, right? And so if I'm an I'm a offshore owner and uh, I, uh, I use it as a retreat, or I send my friends around, they can use it as a retreat while I'm not there, and I'm not there a lot of the time. I'm, I'm an absentee in the fullest extent. Um, you know, it's not clear that I, would, that I would not be entitled or that I'd not be able to achieve that benefit. Uh, and, and so the, the policy, at least in that sense, might favor those offshore investments who buy those expensive condos. Yeah, yeah I'd imagine if they could say it was their primary residence, if they got a, there are a couple different potential standards they use, but I know one of them is if you if you vote in Hawaii, have a Hawaii driver's license, yeah. and that, see, you could easily easy. do that, yeah. But I, I'm not even sure that those things are even tested. Um, you, f you file the form. Yeah, And unless true. there's something to the contrary, I mean, maybe there's more about this, and we should talk to the tax office about it, but uh, if you file the form, uh, who's to say? You don't have to send in your, your voting record, I don't think. Um, no, you're right. You so, don't. Or, or that you prove that you, you know, have a, the old standard points of uh, 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 residence um, domicile, huh? that you vote, that you have a safe deposit box here, that you register your car here, you have, you know, roots and connections with the yeah. state. But if you, you know, if you happen to live somewhere else and you just sort of say that you are, make this your... Um, then um, I suppose that opens you to an argument that um, you may have to pay income tax. That's another issue. Mm -hmm. um, but at least I, I don't think I, I, you could probably you could probably get away with it somehow. Probably. Um, so the, the question is policy. 
On the other hand, somebody like you, who had to scrape the money together for the house, um, who has to work, who has to, you know, uh, uh, get it wherever you can, and there are hundreds of thousands of people just like you who have homes here, and it's the, their main asset is in the home. And as a matter of state policy, we, we do want to encourage them mm -hmm. for the stability of their families, for the stability of the community in general, and of our society broadly. We want them to stay in their homes. We don't want them to be stressed and have to leave their homes. Um, we want to encourage them to have a good experience in their homes and a good relationship with the government uh, about their homes. It just seems to me as a matter of policy that we don't want to hurt them. We, don't, we want to treat them equitably. And uh, if we have a, a policy about giving them homeowners exemptions, we don't want to nail them just because of a technicality. It seems to me right. that, just... that that would be a favored policy in order to encourage a better society in Hawaii. Um, so, I, you know, the question that you point out to the city council, maybe it's the state legislature, I don't know. Somebody might want I to look at this. I think it's city council because it's a city ordinance, so I think it's a, a council issue that they'd have to take it up and, and yeah. revise it. Yeah. But I, I mean, I also think about families that maybe bought their homes 20 or 30 years ago when, when they were a lot cheaper compared to today, and now their houses are one or two million dollars value. They weren't expecting these right. kind of taxes. The taxes <laughs> yeah, I mean, like somebody in the neighborhood, in a neighborhood near Kaka'ako, where the values are have gone astronomical over the past, you know, what, uh, yeah, five maybe. years maybe. Um, they they have a higher valuation for tax purposes, and in any neighborhood where it, it's growing and there are new houses nearby, and for one reason or another, values are higher, then your taxes are going to be higher. So if you're you know, sort of a legacy owner back when, and you, you scraped together some money, and maybe your house is appreciated in some way, but, you know, reality is you don't have the money to afford taxes on that highly appreciated valuation, uh, whether it's mm -hmm. your fault or your benefit, I don't know, but, um, so it's it's really problematic to uh, to nail that homeowner and stress out that the economy, the, the economics of, of that family. Um, there's, there's a policy point here somewhere. Yeah, I definitely think so, because I think, I'm guessing the original intention of this was to tax the people that are investing here that don't live here, or the people that are buying vacation homes here but don't live here. Yeah, and comma Aino rates. Yes, that's what it amounts exactly. To. And we've got to preserve that because the, the disparity between the income of an average Middle class family or lower middle class family in Hawaii is, uh, and, uh, and one of these investors who comes from offshore is so great. Uh, and the tax disparity is also so great. We really don't want local people falling into the characterization of, of, um, of somebody, uh, what do you call it? R resident A? What, tax? Yes, residential A. Residential A. So mm, you this don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> right, and I worry about it because, uh, you know, we have homeless. And, you know, in this show, we've examined many people who have been perfectly middle class. Mm -hmm. And uh, some things happen, maybe a medical issue, um, and before you know it, they can't pay the mortgage, mm -hmm. and they lose their home, and then they're homeless, and their families are stressed, and their children are stressed, and the future of, of everyone around them is stressed. And it's like in many cases, it's like permanent what happens. We yes. have a growing problem about that. Affordable housing is, you know, one solution, although it hasn't gone that far, actually. Um, but also, to, to not to take a not to take a nick at them this way, uh, with a, a kind of technicality. I yeah, think, I mean, you know. I think for a lot of people, this amounts to maybe an entire mortgage payment, depending yeah. on what when you got your mortgage and how small or big it is. But a couple thousand dollars is. It's no small thing for most families. Well, I hope that woman uh, who appealed because she was sick and she had to move out for a while um, and left the house vacant, I uh, hope she wins that appeal. I'm not clear that she did or will, but that, that seems to me a very compelling case. And I hope the Board of Review, or if not the Board of Review, the Tax, tax Appeal Court has the, um, uh, the power and the sensitivity 
to give give her a break. Yeah, I hope so. And I also hope that you get a break. I hope you uh, succeed in your appeal. Thank you. If nothing else, I hope that what I've learned from it can can be a lesson to other people to avoid having to pay this tax, and possibly it's it'll result in some change um, for the future of this law. Yeah. yeah. That's why we, we call the takeaway, um, be careful. Um, you should check up and see that you file the right papers in the right way yes. and before the deadline. So what happened to Sarah won't happen to you. And particularly if you're a homeowner, a new homeowner, or if you're a homeowner who moved away and had any kind of mail forwarding, especially for a short or long period, when you come back, make sure you go online um, with the Real Property of Honolulu website and, and file, file your exemption yeah. forms. Yeah. Nobody's going to tell you, but Think Tech will. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Sarah Fairchild, concerned citizen. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>